All right, good luck. Yeah, my stream is live. It's dropping almost all the frames, which is quite unfortunate, but we'll make do. All right, so out of habit, I generally play fourth file rook. We're going to play fourth file rook again because it's a great opening. For a beginner to play. Um, meanwhile, I'm going to bounce another machine on my network just in case that somehow improves um, my network traffic situation. So uh, let's see. All right, so I've seen this before. Um, one thing I've learned from previous games here is that I need to take a moment to make sure I'm castled before I launch some sort of crazy counterattack. So let's take a moment. Um, they have completed the boat castle. Uh, now put the king inside the boat. Meanwhile, I have castled uh, just to the right here. Okay, so they're intending some sort of attack on the left side of the board. Um, Right, so here I don't necessarily need to be, well, let's see. I wonder if I'm going to end up doing a similar thing to what I did earlier this week, where I opened the diagonal. Uh, here I seem to have better cause to do it than I did last time. Um... It doesn't really profit me to open it. Well, no, the idea that I could promote on the fourth file is the profit there. So that might actually, there's some value there. Um, yes, I'm going to pursue this, even if it seems a little odd. I don't know. Obviously, if my opponent had a knight, I would be a bit scared to offer this exchange with my king not fully castled. Um, lately I've been doing I've not been striking a proper balance between defense and attack and I think this seems to be a proper balance um, where yes I could move up my silver and I will get to that but also I don't want this silver climbing um, up so quickly if I were some convenient way I can rebut that so yeah this pawn move should discourage the silver from advancing under the threat that I could push this again and maybe get my rook promoted on the fourth file this is a bit odd but also a bit I don't know to me a bit odd is this gold move Yes, the gold was a bit prone back here, but now it can't defend the 4-9 uh, square. Okay, so my opponent is now opposing my rook. 
So I should take a second to continue castling. Unless I have a better, like, attacking move or something. But it would take something pretty convincing for me to pursue an attack right now. So if the silver moves, I can do a bishop drop on 5-5. Five five. So I don't think it's going to move this instant. Okay. Well, we've got tactics. Interesting. Um, my silver's too far away to fight in this battle. And if I exchange bishops, this silver just climbs up every time we exchange bishops, so... Yeah, I think this is my only way forward. It's a bit awkward. So, what's the object now? If I pawn drop, the silver takes, and we exchange bishops, I can drop the bishop on 5-5. Five five. They can drop a bishop on 3-7. And we exchange, and then I can drop over here. I don't know, this seems odd. Seems like I'm missing something better. If I exchange bishops right now, I could drop my bishop right here. They could move the gold to trap it. Um, that would not be ideal. If I push this pawn, if silver takes, then I can redo the same idea we might see a rook exchange. Well, if the silver takes, I exchange rooks, and I'm better. Um, uh, what am I afraid of? <laughs> Losing the initiative, really. Um, which I've already lost. Yeah, I need to build this for my castle, just in case I get attacked later. This position's pretty tenuous. And that's not a good thing. Get this out of harm's way before something bad happens to it. is improving. Good. A 
or rather the rate at which frames are being dropped is decreasing. Anyway, so yes, I'm trying to activate my bishop and trying to activate my rook. And I would love a rook exchange about now. Yes, my camp is kind of a mess, but I'm this castle's supposed to be kind of good against that sort of situation. Okay, this um, this is a clear invitation to exchange bishops and drop on five five. This is waving a red flag in my face, asking me to exchange bishops and drop on five five. Because even if they do this 3-7 drop, we trade bishops and I redo the same thing. So, um, do I delay my exchange? Because then they just push the silver up. The delay doesn't help me any, so we're going to do this. and put this on a useful square. I guess the other thing that I should have noticed and didn't until now was that knight up actually is kind of menacing too. Um, I think this is still the better play because this stops them from doing the same move, but yeah, my knight to 3-3 could be interesting as well. Yeah, the silver's kind of pinned, although the rook's defended. So. Uh, yep, this knight advance could have been quite good. Because a rook exchange would help me trade and start attacking stuff. And this knight might get to participate in an attack at some point too. But I don't need to rush that. Right now, if they do a bishop drop somewhere over here, this side of the board gets difficult to defend. So, um, Although I guess they could bring the gold up to try to make things interesting, but then they are dropping this silver. So I'm half expecting they're just going to bishop drop here and then promote in my corner. Or at least threaten to. And we might see both players promoting. Or they just close this line entirely. But now what's their silver doing? Was this what they had in mind? And does this, in fact, uh, encourage me to bring my knight out and like ask them what's the silver doing here? Okay. Um, so if I back up, they could bishop drop, I could take... I don't know, man. This is weird. They have one general who's on a journey all by himself. Um, who I'm sure would have love to have some support from um, his teammates. Uh, okay, yeah, he's got support from the pawns, but he's on the front line here. It's his neck on the line. So... Yeah, it's possible things might get crazy pretty soon here. If they aren't already.
I'm attempting to figure out, like, is there some threat of a bishop drop on 2-2 or 1-1 or something? Like, if they do that, I just take the silver, and if they refuse to take the silver on account of me threatening this lance, then I can just drop the silver here, uh, which more or less forces some exchanges to happen. Yeah, I'm not sure, like... Okay, yeah, I thought this was going to happen. And now the question is, which piece do I take here with? But yeah, the silver move looked pretty forced. Um, so if I do rook takes, if they do pawn t uh, drop, I can take this pawn. Um, so if I want a rook exchange, I can have it. I've been saying that I want one. Do I really want one? I don't know. I've been saying I do. Um, I could do bishop takes and give my bishop something useful to do. Um, but then they could like drop a bishop here. Well, no, my silver and gold protect each other. I don't need to be afraid of a rook exchange. They might need to be afraid of a rook exchange, but possibly this bishop takes might gain me a tempo on everything else that we're looking at. Um, so even if offering the rook trade is good, this bishop taking here might be better. Well, then they can pawn drop on my rook's head, that's just really annoying. In fact, loses my bishop, so yeah, that would be sad. That would be a sad way to go. Let's not be sad. Let's pay attention. <laughs> okay, there's the rook exchange. Did it help me? I don't know. Maybe. We'll find out. There's definitely a lot of targets on my end of the board. Which is a bit scary. Um, right, so I expected that. I don't think it's going to work the way they think it's going to work. We'll find out. Um, so if I do nothing, they get a free silver. So... It's basically guaranteed that I'm going to take this knight, unless, like, something completely ruins my day if I do it. Um, yeah, if I take that, they do have one fork here. Uh, I could rook drop against it, they take my silver, I take the lance. I think I'm okay with that. Um, well, they get a dragon, too, which is pretty annoying. Maybe I'm not okay with that. I mean, I get a dragon, they get a dragon, everybody gets a dragon, but they do it all with tempo, which is not great for me. So yeah, let's let's take the obvious bird in the hand here. So this is going to cost me my silver. And then my gold becomes something of an obvious target. Um, and I'm debating, like, do I take this promoted knight or do I just run the hell away? Also, do I like place my rook and promote it immediately? Do I have any real devastating threat there? I might. Um, I might have some pretty good threats. 
Also, like, what's this about? Are they considering, like, a bishop drop to hit my horse or something? Why the delay? Oh, if they had a gold, yeah, the bishop drop could be catastrophic for me. Um, they don't, but if they did, it could be. Um... We're going to offer the silver for the low, low price of free. I get usually you'd want to bring this gold up and then try to push this pawn and put the gold up there to make a high mino, but um, don't think I have time for that. I'm questioning, are they going to bishop drop, exchange bishops, and give me this horse? Or are they going to do that instead? Okay, I need this knight. This knight is mine now. And the reason I need that is to block their bishop. Or maybe I put a lance to block it, I'm not sure. But one of my pieces has got to block this diagonal. Okay, so instead of the direct attack, well, this sets up two threats. That's pretty clever. Um, That sets up a lot of threats at once. Gonna directly attack the king. No beating around the bush here. Yeah, 
Let's say, still want my gold. I'm still not interested in offering it for free. So this bishop is, they, the saying that they use, or the metaphor they use, is offering string to a piece, if you're defending it. So this bishop is taxed, uh, holding out to the token. Um, it's not that I have any immediate attack on here, but... Like, now this pawn looks kind of silly here, unless it's supporting something else that's going to follow. But for another piece to follow, um, you'd have to have control over this square here. Right, so there's that. Um, this prevents my knight drop idea here. Um, so since I can't drop the knight, Got a couple options. One is I take this pawn, threatening a knight drop. Two is I drop the lance here. I'm not sure which is better. Uh, well, the threat of the knight drop would be like bishop takes knight, horse takes bishop, pawn takes, and I don't see an immediate follow-up. Um, whereas the lance drop seems pretty direct. Um, it's not where I would love to put a lance, but well, I could put the knight here too. But then they just move this gold and my knight looks silly. Um, I could also horse takes here, threatening knight drop back here on f5, then the knight could take on the weak point. Uh, they can reinforce this weak point by placing the silver to defend their castle. Um, also, among all of this, they're threatening a rook exchange. to do. Yeah, we need to get this horse back into the game. It's not the fastest attacking move, but um, that horse in the corner is worthless. much better in the center. So strange. Hmm. 
I'm guessing they didn't bet this would happen. They might have expected the knight on some other square. But yeah, here they're forced to do something to defend this castle. It could just be a knight drop or something, but um, I'm forcing them to do something kind of heavy. When they've done that, then my lance drop is not so crazy. Although I could lance drop again to reinforce this attack, that might be even better. Then they'd have to reinforce their defense, and I can't outnumber that. Right. So now that knight's not going to be used for an attack anymore. Um, trying to figure out how, oh wait, the silver could be placed here to defend the pawn if they had to. Okay, so. I think I'll be taking this gold. I think. I could be wrong. Actually, this is interesting. So if they offer this dragon rook exchange like I was predicting earlier, I think now it works out for me, because then I take this knight and I can drop the knight. And their castle is in this really weird shape. But also, if they offer the exchange, maybe I just take the gold. Like, my attack has gotten pretty severe. Yeah, I think I just take the gold here and just... Well, no. Like, that's a free silver. Why don't I want it? Surely I want it, right? I could take two golds and give up my bishop. Or I could take a silver. And then later on take the golds. I'm confused. I think he's planning some sort of attack, but I don't think he has the power he needs to pull this attack off if this piece is aligned the way they are. Okay, and now we got our one space gap dragon. I just have to be super careful not to Nifu. Right, so I think I just want to drop right here and surround the king. Um, This is kind of awkward. Only kind of awkward. 
40秒50秒So this drops again, or this protects again against a pesky knight thing. But mostly just prevents the king from dashing into the edge file, where it would still be pretty endangered, but. Um, yeah, so now I have a gold drop threat as well as threats of just capturing on the side of the king. Right, so um hmm. Okay, I'll bite. I'll take it. If you insist. All right, good game. That was an adventure. Let's see. Uh, is there interest in post-game analysis? I assume there's at least some interest. That attack got pretty wild. Um, but yeah, I remembered to use all of my pieces, which was pretty great. Um, yeah, bringing my horse into the center of the board and then finding that good square for my knight. It was honestly uh, better than I imagined. I did think that it would be interesting. Um, yeah, uh, your attack looked uh, quite powerful. I think my attack was slightly faster. Um, maybe that token on uh, 5-1 uh, was just too slow. Because he did a lot of things very well this game, but my attack was just very fast, somehow. Um, oh yeah, I guess that, well, the silver move might be forced, but at this point my attack is quite powerful. Um, so is there anything I can do here? Is there anything I can do here? I can't pawn drop. Um, this is kind of messy. Well, that... Uh, 
I don't know that that's good because I'd be giving away my horse and knight for the dragon. Like, I need those pieces. Yeah, I think this is forced, but I'm just not willing to admit it because I don't like this. Um. Oh, wait. So now can I drop this here, perhaps? So got one, two, three. So even if they start defending, like this is this is just a really hard to position to defend. I think my attack might be overwhelming at this point. Yeah. Um no, you're right. Maybe just this boat castle is much too weak. Um, I sack the rook here because I'm like, what are they going to do with the rook? Uh, it's not something that's going to really help their attack here as much as me having tons of generals swarming their king is going to help mine. Um. Yeah, I think... Their castle is just collapsing. Their attack hasn't progressed fast enough, and mine seems to be on its normal schedule. Um, like, this Tokian chased all my generals away here, but... Um, I don't know. What do I do about this? How do I respond to this one? I don't know if Shogi has a mercy rule when the king is under this kind of severe attack, but uh, no, I'm kind of joking. But no, this is just really scary looking. Yeah. Probably best to leave this end game to the engines, but my guess is that uh, your attack was just somewhat slow. Um, like you did a lot of powerful moves, it just took a very, very long time for them to take effect. Um, Hang on, that's probably not accurate. Um, I'm guessing I probably have to take this token after all. But still. Um, maybe I'm 
uh, reading this incorrectly as well. Well, the king, yeah, like if, well, both of our kings can escape, really. Ah, uh, I meant calculating, seeing variations, whatever you want to call that. Um, so... Yeah, maybe my attack's not as powerful as I thought. But I always counted my ability to run away. Yeah, your attack looks quite powerful. So, I mean, he was kind of confused, like, what went wrong, and I'm trying to explain at least what my perspective of that is. But I could be wrong, too. <laughs> uh, very nice. Yeah, no, I thought this was a really good game. I did, to be honest. So, like, here I'm threatening this. It takes a couple moves to get there, but, uh, yeah, so, like, this is the idea. It doesn't surprise me that the engine's, like, uh, yeah, I got nothing. Wow, it's even until the end game. Okay, well, I, I guess we've been watching too many pro games and stealing their ideas and not innovating enough. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe we should submit this to Road to Shodan. Or what's it? Yeah. Whatever that series is entitled. Because, uh, yeah, it felt like there were a lot of forcing moves this game. I'm just curious. Uh, like, where was the tipping point? Because I thought this night drop was inspired in a way. <laughs> because this is beyond me even with AI. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be good, even with an AI, like, it does not do the world's best job at coaching. So it's good to get uh, perspective from human players who can give you good practical advice about how to play. Well, that's interesting. Huh, I missed that. We both missed that, but... That looks... This could put a uh, damper in my entire Knight 5-5 idea. And I need to find a different idea. That's too bad. Huh. Even so, maybe I... Well, I can't just take the Knight. Much as I'd like to. Um, yeah. Oh, well, that's interesting. So even though he's got the silver in hand, nobody had the big numeric advantage according to whatever engine he's using. So, yeah, I'm not really sure what to say. I guess, is there anything you want to look at from the beginning, man? Because, like, this is how Hidechi recommends to improve. I know it was an exciting endgame. I know it's frustrating, um, 
playing a good attack and not finding stuff, but yeah. Oh, okay, cool. So I get to run the show here. That's kind of special. Um, so yeah, I wonder. Hmm. I wonder if King Ink 2 was reasonable. Maybe I should try something faster here. I don't know. Like, castling is reasonable, but... Um, just seems like this is a really low castle at the moment. But only two pawns have been pushed. Maybe... I, I don't know. I got nothing. Uh, maybe this. So, with an idea of, like, a third file break. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't even know in what order I would try that, but... Trying to break on this file really early could be interesting. Uh, uh, the silver move is fine before, or uh, gold 4252 as well. Okay, so gold up to either of these two squares could be reasonable too. Yeah, I don't know from what I've been doing. Better to castle and attack later. Yeah, that makes sense. So, I can't really object to that. Um, I always get in these weird fights. So we had one heck of a stare down going on here. Um... Yeah, there's not a whole lot I can do to change that situation. Maybe this was not smart. I don't know. Opening theory is hard. <laughs> there's just too much to know. There always is. But, yeah. It'd be interesting getting perspective from human players who are very good. See what they'd recommend or try. So, yeah, I guess this is forced. Um, yeah, and this, well, yeah, I looked at a few other things, but I think I have to take, I have to retreat now. I can't take the silver, can I? Um, well, there's no need to take the silver, because, like, this is just decent for me. Um... So, okay, he's going to look at something else, and this is good. Oh, yes, I should just return the hat to him so he can show me stuff, because I don't know what to look at. Pushing the pawn 4-5, I guess, was kind of risky on my part. Here, the, yeah, the AI would prefer bishop takes bishop immediately. Oh. Ah. Thought I had missed something somewhere around here. Um. Because, yeah, this position got bad for me all of a sudden. Like, it went from even to just, like, very challenging in the span of a few moves. 
Yeah. Well, I wasn't quite happy or satisfied with uh, what happened without uh, that exchange. Like, clearly you have an attack and I don't yet, so like that's not entirely great for me. So yeah, this I need to try this, but I don't understand why this is better. Just that it's an alternative, it can offer some hope, but I don't see exactly what's up here. Yep. Boat castle sprung a leak. <laughs> I mean, what? If you want a solid castle, you gotta build a solid castle. If you want a boat, you can have a boat. Um, it's risky. Yeah. Guess we'll need uh, Shogi Harbor <laughs> to review. Because, yeah, I don't get it. Uh, well, it's something. Yeah. I'm not sure what else there is for us to review here. It's just a complicated game. I blitzed through the moves, like stuff happened. Oh, wait a second. So, yeah, this here surprised me. Maybe this is the leak. I don't know. Yeah. Slowing down is a bit safer. Um, so maybe that's the leak. I didn't really understand this move. Um, yeah, it's great to chase my bishop away, because, like, the bishop is super uncomfortable to be facing here. Problem is, um, my bishop's going to get active no matter what, so... Um, yeah, I played this, and... Yeah, I don't know, like, what's the plan. Since bishop 5-5 five five drops material... I don't understand this. Oh. Huh. Unfortunately, uh, I can't help much there. I play ranging rook because it's easy for beginners to learn. So, yeah, I don't know what to tell you, man. <laughs> Fourth file rook, best file rook. Um, at least for beginners. Um, I know how to make it and stuff, but the point is for the king not be with the bishop, which really isn't the case. Yeah, I guess. You tell me. I have no idea. I was just spooked a bit by Wojtek saying, like, uh, some static rook opening theory changes a lot. Uh, can I see host? Sure. I think he means, does he want the hat back? Sure.
okay. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Because I'm not immediately threatening to hit the head of this castle. Yeah, that's a decent way to build a castle. This has been seen before. Right. In fact, I think I've tried this once before and had decent results with it. Um, but yeah, that makes a lot of sense, just given where my pieces are aiming. I've been a bit over-anxious with my central pawn move. And it's fine to slow things down a bit. Yeah, the only way to make me know it's static rook is to block the diagonal. Uh oh. Okay, if you say so. I have no idea. I mean, I've seen people block the diagonal, both Ascenta and Gota, but I have no idea. But yeah, I think the king is comparatively safe there. That's interesting. Unlike, well, here, unlike chess, in shogi, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, in chess, if you do that around your king, well, I've done it. Uh, I've had some good results. I've had some pretty terrible results doing that in chess. So I can't exactly recommend it there, but yeah, here, like, what am I going to attack that with? I have only two ranged pieces that are doing anything my bishop and my rook. I don't have my lances active just yet, so yeah, it's like you can be a bit adventurous here. <laughs> Used to be a madman third file player. Yeah. See, so you, you switch from being a madman third file player to being a static rook player. Okay. That's quite the adjustment. Or is it? I have no idea. Yeah, don't block the diagonal as if you show. Okay, no, I guess, yeah, you're probably right. So, that looks cool. I don't know any of this. At some point, I do want to learn some third fall rook stuff, but maybe later. Uh, <laughs> there's just too much to know. I found something that's decent. And even if I weren't playing fourth file rook, chances are I'd be playing central file because it looks awesome. Like it splits the board into two halves. And sometimes you can see the halves interact with each other, but yeah. For you, third file gets annoyed because of what? Because of what, man? Just this double advance. Yeah. Other people are annoyed by that, too. Where, like, now you've got your bishop in the way of the third file, and, like, your attack's already a bit slow. to regroup around that. I don't know. I don't know all the theory, and perhaps it works better as Santa than Gota, but, um, but yeah, it's certainly inconvenient here. We've already got some problems to solve. Maybe it works better as Senta. I have no idea. Although I've been crushed by some people playing third foul um, rook against me with that tempo advantage. Um, see, I have some idea that it can be pretty strong, but I haven't studied it enough. I need to study more.
I guess at this point I should ask, what do you, the audience, think? Even you watching the video, when I have this recorded and uploaded somewhere, what do you think about this? Okay, because <laughs> I have no idea. And if I play a fourth foul, I get desperate. It looks too defensive in one way or another. Yeah. Yeah. Currently, I'm studying uh, central foul openings a bit. But, yeah. Opening study is hard. It takes practice. It takes some doing. I've had some fortune recently with fourth foul rook. It's been kind of insane. Um, but yeah, I never am super clear as to whether I should push pawn four or five or not. Although people have taught me about this, I still don't get it. I mean, they tell me not to do it, but then I do it and it's okay. But it would be better if I didn't. Except if there are exceptions to the rule, like here, where my opponent plays this super low castle. And so if I, like, play the typical fourth foul stuff, my build-up is just going to be very slow and overcommitted. Alright. GG, thank, uh, thanks for the game. Yeah, I don't know what more to say. Fun game. Interesting game. Um... But, yeah, that was special. Okay. Oh, all right, he's left, so it can take a minute to go back through the game for we who have forgotten stuff about how this is going. See so, a yeah, fourth file, and then I broke here, and I don't think this is right, but I'll be damned if I can find a better move. Um, so, yeah, this opening stuff is tricky anyway. But... Uh, the way this played out turned out better for me. And I was saying during the game, if they do this, I'm just going to exchange and do it again. Um, and if they do this, um, yeah, this would just drop. No, just kidding. Just kidding. I can read. The knight's defending that. This is different than what I thought. So I'd have to take here. And this is my second plan, was just keep dropping here until something positive happens. Although, I also saw this possibility. And, well, actually that doesn't... Does this work? I don't think so. Um, yeah, this is not great. Because the knight defends the silver, and if I push the pawn, they manage to defend the knight. So that's not great. So the bishop would be better placed back here. And, like, everything's all pinned up here. So this is actually quite fine for me. So that's kind of what I was looking at during the game. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of tactics here. But I'm thinking I would kind of expected when I open the diagonal. Maybe this is the best timing for them to, like, jump on this opportunity. Openings are hard. I need to study this better. But yeah, you, the audience, think Ibisha. Static Rook's the way to go. So, yep. Makes sense to me. At least that way you don't... You're not constantly scrambling about, oh shit, like, which way is the right way to go? You have clear guidance and direction. You just need to remember how to play it. Whereas here, I've got to make stuff up all of, all the time. Um, but yeah, here I think like they've. I don't have any great position to drop my bishop on, so I should just continue castling, while they have a variety of different ways they can proceed here. So this is actually pretty awkward for me because I've committed my silver to the square. And, like, this rook is still bearing down this way. Um, yeah, right. So 
So the reason I did this offer of an exchange is like if I had done my normal thing, I was not prepared for this. Either that or I just wasn't in a mood for it. I'm not sure. Um, so now, of course, if I do this, uh, the bishop exchange happens and then like other bad stuff happens for me. Um, well, I don't know. I might be even reading that incorrectly. Huh. Maybe this timing is... Maybe it wins a tempo. It seems unwise, but maybe it's comparatively good compared to what happened in the game. It's still not good, but here I get an extra tempo. That's probably not worth all the hassle that I'm about to go through when this starts climbing. So, yeah, this exchange was just not well motivated. Even if tactically somehow it works out, it was not super bright. But yeah, if I just continue here, I have to be prepared to meet this. So the threat is to push here. Um, so this is a typical way to meet that. And if they push... I forget the move order, but it might be something like this. And if they play here... No, they don't play there. Um, what might happen? Well, if I play this rook move, they just push here and I'm in trouble. Um, so it's too late for me to oppose that way. But if I play this, I think they still do that. Um, so yeah, if I take here, now I have to oppose this rook. And they get this foothold in the door, and now I'm dropping this pawn. So this is not good either. Um, so all this is to say I cannot take that pawn. Taking that pawn is doom. Gloom and doom and worse. Um, so, yeah, that's not a free pawn. But this also means later on I'm going to be hit hard on this third file. But I should at least temporarily be able to withstand some degree of an attack. Um, it's not easy. So I either go back or go up here. If I go up, well, I'm offering a bishop exchange indirectly, which might be fine. Um, but it's not super bright because I have no way to defend this pawn. I mean, I could try to use the rook, but then these pawns just mark. Well, yeah, no, this is death for my silver. Um, so I have to go back. And then they push here, and it's like, what have I even done? Um, I've invited an attack, but it's going to be very difficult for me to defend that. So this is the sort of thing I was afraid of, which is why I didn't castle there, but instead decided to hold this silver back as far as I could. Um... But yeah, possibly I just got my lines mixed up. Like, maybe the silver move is badly mistimed or something. I don't know. More study is required. But yeah, interesting game. Um, so the way we played it out, I offered the bishop exchange. I didn't have to worry about getting hit by the normal attack here. And somehow the whatever engine my opponent used to review the game uh, seemed to kind of like what I did. Maybe this gold move is not so smart. I thought I was being clever, 
by avoiding some sort of cheeky nonsense with like a silver drop here or a knight drop there or something. They're not going to drop the knight there, but like, I thought this was clever, but in hindsight, like, yeah, maybe, maybe it would have been best to go here instead of there. Um, maybe I conceded territory a little bit too quickly. Yeah, and then he missed uh, this excellent knight counter. And suddenly my knight's exposed and things get crazy. Um, yeah, I don't really know what to make of this anymore. Like, if I sack this for the pawn, this is just not great. But, I mean, what else can I do? So yeah, that would have been an excellent counter. Instead, he found this knight on the first rank thing and just got crushed. And this is a uh, really menacing attack. Um, so at the end, I did this super paranoid silver capture, but like this is probably the safer... In fact, yeah, I have this knight move. I don't need to be super afraid of this bishop check. What the hell was I thinking? Check. Um, surely I have mate here, right? Uh, so if I check here, if they try to run away... Oh, that is a really simple mate. Okay. That would have been less painful. Um, and I think, obviously, like, if they try to, f instead of fleeing, if they dash into it, like, this is made. Yeah, so. Uh, so they can't do the obvious thing here. Not right away. Um, so with a lance in hand, I mean, what do they do? That is painful. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, I mean, if they try to run away this way, this is mate too. So, yeah, that's... Wow, this is definitely your boat springing a leak. Yeah, so... I guess the only thing you can do is try to hold on to the boat. But, um, that's also checkmate. Wait, that's not mate directly. Well, I'm sorry, it's not mate on one, but now this lance is pinned. So yeah, of course this is mate. And the king moves and you checkmate it. Okay, so interesting game. Um, yeah, we'll have to submit this for further analysis with stronger players who can give us ideas. Like, yes, the end game was pretty crazy, but... Um, be worth understanding what was missed earlier in the game that could have led to a different sort of game. Anyhow, uh, yeah, I think that's our second game for the day, so we're going to break here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.